In the last part, we have seen or how to quantify a plastic strain when a dislocation moves. However, we need to find out what are the forces acts on a dislocation. What causes this movement of dislocation such as climb, glide or cross slip. So let's figure it out what are these forces. So we will take a very simple example of an edge dislocation. Let's consider this a crystal where this is a slip plane and this is a dislocation line having a tangent vector t and a Burgess vector b which is perpendicular to this tangent vector which makes this as an edge dislocation and let's consider the dimensions of these crystals to be d h is height and l is length and let's apply a shear stress tau and let's see this dislocation moves on this slip plane and let's call this force as a glide force so when this dislocation moves completely from one end to another end you know that it creates a step called a displacement vector as a magnitude given by a Burgess vector. So this is we see that slip part and this is we consider this as unslip part. So when a dislocation moves by a distance d it causes the crystal to create a step by an amount of Burgess vector b. Now when we consider that this crystal when it's subjected to an external stress and it deforms plastically there can be a correlation of the plastic deformation to a dislocation motion which we can consider because we are considering a dislocation is moving on the slip plane which creates a when it moves completely by a distance d it creates a step b on a crystal so we can consider this plastic deformation to a dislocation motion and thus we can consider that the stresses acting on this crystal can cause a force on this dislocation line I have marked it over F here so I can say that the stresses creates a force on this dislocation line to move this dislocation from one end of the crystal to another end so I can say that the stresses on crystal creates a forces on dislocation. Now if we want to give more physical meaning to it, we can say that work done on this crystal by the stresses must be equivalent to the work done on dislocation by this force. So we can say that when you consider a plastic deformation, we correlate with its dislocation motion and this plastic deformation is caused by a stresses on a crystal and this stresses leads to forces on a dislocation and to give a physical meaning we can say that work done on this crystal by the stresses must be equal to the work done on the dislocation by this force. Now let's write down what is a work done by the external force on a crystal so I write it down work done on a crystal by a shear stress tau I can say that the force on a crystal into distance so I have a shear stress which is acting on this plane so I can multiply with its area and I can get a force acting on this crystal so I can say that tau the area of this plane is L into B L so area of this plane is L into D and the distance which it moves will be by a Burgess vector B so this is an external crystal which we have shown it moves by displacement vector B so we can write down that the work done on a crystal by an shear stress tau will be tau L D B. Now let 
say that I am with the force acting on a dislocation which I have marked over here. So you have a dislocation and the force is acting on this dislocation and this force will cause dislocation to move and there will be a work done too. Let's call that work done to be work done on a dislocation because of force F and that will be F into D because this dislocation is moving the entire length on the slip plane. So when the dislocation moves by a distance D, the crystal moves by a purchase vector B. So we can say that the work done on dislocation by force F equal to F into D. Now we can correlate this work done on a crystal equal to work done on a dislocation and we can equate this. So what we get is tau LDB equal to F into D. So this says that when dislocation moves by distance D, the crystal moves by Burgess vector P and thus the work done must be equal and if we arrange these terms, let's say F upon L equal to tau into B, we get this relation. And we call this as a glide force. Now I replace this F upon L to be F, which is force per unit length of a dislocation, that is F upon L or a glide force and F equal to tau into B. So I get a relation force per unit length of a dislocation equal to shear stress multiplied by the purchase vector. So this we have done it for a, an edge dislocation. We can find out this relation for a screw dislocation too where shear stress acts on this slip plane along the purchase vector also for a mixed dislocation where I have a dislocation line or represented by tangent vector and Burgess vector makes some angle with this tangent vector and when I apply a shear stress there will be a force per unit length of a dislocation which will be given by f equal to tau into b so we can use a similar approach of work balance and we can find out the same relation that the force per unit length of a dislocation even for a screw or mixed dislocation which comes out to be tau into b and this force will be acting perpendicular to every point to the tangent vector so this force is perpendicular to the tangent vector So this force is called as a glide force. Now let's look at how to find out estimate a glide force. So let's consider an edge dislocation. We have seen earlier that climb occurs for an edge dislocation only. So let's consider this an edge dislocation in a crystal with Burgess vector B. And let's mark the dimensions of this crystal to be L length to be L, D height and W width. And let's mark the coordinate axis like X, Y and Z in this manner. And let's apply a normal stress sigma X along X direction. So this sigma x is the only normal stress which we are applying. So I replace it with sigma only. Now this normal stress sigma is perpendicular to this extra half plane. And what it causes will be a stretching of this plane which are nearer to it and this stretching will lead to 
joining atoms to this extra half plane and making this dislocation to climb down. So let me write it down. So this stress will act on this planes which will stretch this plane a bit here and what happens the atoms from this planes will move into extra half plane and thus this extra half plane climbs down similarly when we have a compressive stress what happens is that these planes will get squeezed in and the atoms from an extra half plane will join in planes and there will be a climb up of this dislocation. So normal stress to extra half plane, the nature of normal stress to extra half plane will determine whether an edge dislocation will climb up or will climb down. So here sigma xx is a normal phase force to the extra half plane and this is a tensile in nature so this stress will cause a force on this edge dislocation to climb down. So tensile force leads to a dislocation climb down whereas compressive force leads to a dislocation to climb up. So when this force which is acting on this dislocation, when it causes climb down of this dislocation, it will create a work on a dislocation and this stress also create a work on this crystal. So when this dislocation move by a distance d or when it climbs down the total distance d, it will create a normal strain or normal displacement by a Burgess vector b. So work done on a crystal by sigma that is this stress, normal stress can be given as sigma L into D which is nothing but the cross section area on which it is acting. So this is L and this is D. So this is a force which we get and this is a displacement. When the dislocation completely moves a distance D which is nothing but a displacement vector given by magnitude of Burgess vector. So you get a work done on a crystal by normal stress sigma to be equal to sigma LD into B. And the work done on a dislocation by force acting on this dislocation because of an externally applied stress you can say that this is F which is acting into a displacement D. So we consider that this dislocation moves completely distance d, there will be a creation of a step by b. So the displace the, the work done on a dislocation by force f is given by f into d. And when we equate this, we get force per unit length fl is equal to sigma into b. Here F is force per unit length of a dislocation which is given by sigma B which is a climb force. So in both cases we have seen glide force and a climb force and we evaluated F to be a force per unit length of a dislocation. This sigma B here that is a climb force where sigma is a stress normal force to the 
or normal stress to the extra half plane whereas in glide force f was or the here that there was a tau which was a shear stress acting on a slip plane along the burgess vector now let's look at the forces on a dislocation so let's consider this an edge dislocation and this is a slip plane where i mark a tangent vector and a burgess vector let's mark the axis that x1 x2 and x3 and let's consider the general stress state which is sigma 1 1 sigma 1 2 sigma 1 3 and with this all nine components of this stress and let's find out what can be the component which cause the glide distress acting on slip plane and stress acting along Burgess vector B. Let me write it down. So here you have x1, x2 and x3. So here it will be sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, sorry here it will be sigma 3 3 and let us let us mark shear stresses too. So you have sigma 1 2 that means it acts on a plane 1 along 2 direction. So here it will be sigma 1 2 sigma 1 3 here it will be sigma 2 1 sigma 1 2 sigma 1 3 sigma 2 1 and here it is sigma 2 3 and on this plane here it will be sigma 3 1 let me write it down sigma 3 1 and sigma 3 2 So we have marked all the components here and let's find out which can cause a glide force and you have a climb which is a stress acting perpendicular to extra half plane. So let me mark extra half plane too. Let's take another color. So this is our Burgess vector and tangent vector so this will be an, our extra half plane which is lying perpendicular to both the tangent vector and a Burgess vector because this is in an edge dislocation so let's find out what are the glide forces and climb forces acting on this edge dislocation and which component of this stress causes this glide force and climb force so for a glide force you need a stress acting on a slip plane and stress acting along b so we need a stress acting on this plane so this plane let me let me mark this plane also so this plane is is nothing but perpendicular to x2 so this will plane will be 2 and along B it should be 1 so you should have sigma 2 1 which should be causing a glide of this dislocation so you can see that sigma 2 1 is the only component of stress which will make this dislocation to glide on this slip plane all these other components are not acting on this slip plane or are not along the direction of the Burgess vector. So you will not have this stress. So you will have sigma 1 1, let us sigma 1 1 which causes a stress acting perpendicular to extra half plane. So let's find out what is the stress perpendicular to this extra half plane. So it will be a sigma 1 1 only. 
so you can see that this plane this plane is nothing but a perpendicular to x1 direction so you have sigma 1 1 which causes a climb of this uh, dislocation so you have sigma 1 1 we will not have sigma 1 3 then uh, consider sigma 2 1 so yes sigma 2 1 is acting on this slip plane along by this vector so we will have sigma 2 1 we will not have sigma 2 3 you will not have sigma 3 1 you will not have sigma 3 2 you will not have sigma 3 3 you will not have sigma 2 2 2 so you will have sigma 1 1 which causes a climb of this dislocation and sigma 2 1 to cause a glide of this dislocation so f glide i can write it as sigma 2 1 into bajas vector b and f climb as sigma 1 1 into bajas vector so thus we can find out what are the forces acting on a dislocation if i have given stress state and i can find out which components of this stress can cause a glide or a climb of the dislocation now here you can say that the sigma 1 1 is tensile in nature and thus this dislocation will climb down so here we have climb so we have seen in earlier slide that let me write it down the tensile force will cause a dislocation tensile normal stress to extra hub plane that is important to extra hub plane will cause dislocation to climb down so this is a force which we have find, found climb force but this force will make this dislocation to climb down whereas the glide force here will make this dislocation because it is acting along this dislocation that is along this Birch's vector so this force will make this dislocation to glide along x1 direction on this plane so with this i will stop here